All right, hi guys. Welcome to our moving on up night. And um, what I'm going to talk about tonight is how to move up and how to move up quickly. And I just want you to be to be aware of what's available to you because I'm going to go through the whole buffet of Mary Kay. All right, because this is your business, and you can get whatever it is that you want out of your business. However. If there's not something, you know, if you're not where you want to be or there is something like, you know, $10,000, $100,000 a month available in Mary Kay, I just want you to know about it because it is available for you too, okay? And I'm looking for leaders. We are building our future area and I'm looking for leaders and people who want to move quickly and want to move up the career path and really maximize the marketing plan. So, um... If that's you, then let's talk. If not, then that's okay. Then at least you know about the marketing plan and it's available if you ever did want to do something with it. Um, okay, what I love on Mary Kay too is all of this that I'm going to talk about is available to every single one of you. It doesn't matter about your background, your work experience, who you know. Everybody starts at the exact same spot and has the same opportunity for advancement in Mary Kay. I mean, the highest income that Mary Kay has given out in one month one month is over $166,000 in one month. And you guys, if that's available for, I think it was Barbara Sundin or I don't know, I remember. Um, if it was available for her, it's available for you too, okay? So there's lots of ways that you can make money in Mary Kay. And I'm just gonna go over all of the avenues of income, okay? Because let's be clear, you can make, you can make great money with sales. I mean, we make 50% commission. There's no higher commission out there. You can make great money with your sales, right? That's instant money. We've talked a lot about sales. In fact, I just did a video today um, on our Facebook group about ways to finish up your star and ways to make some quick sales, okay? So we've talked we talk a lot about sales. You know, of course, doing facials and stuff is the best way to go. But there are several different avenues of income. Actually, there's three ways you make money in Mary Kay. You make money from um, sales, and then you make money from team building, and then you can have a car income, okay? So we're going to talk about those other two ways because sales we talk about a lot. So. If you want to move quickly, you want to be taking advantage of all the streams of income, right, that you possibly can. So what we're gonna do first is I'm just gonna explain the marketing plan to you. Um, I, you should have gotten all these attachments in your email, so this attachment, it talks about step to success. This one's black and white, but um, the one I emailed you is, is um, pretty colors. Okay, so we'll just go through it really quickly. It's all laid out for you here, but basically everyone starts at the bottom as an independent beauty consultant. We make 50% commission. You can be a star consultant. You can get company bride prizes and all the cute little bracelets that they're offering for doing 600 wholesale and lots of different cool stuff, right? Then you become a senior beauty consultant when you have one to two active team members, okay? And hopefully we know, hopefully you all know what active is. It just means that you've placed at least one 225 wholesale order in the last three months. Um, so that means that these are your team members, that your team members are active. You have one to two active team members, okay? And at that point, you make a 4% commission. Now, it comes from Mary Kay. It isn't from, like, the consultant paying the person above them, okay? So if you recruit somebody, Susie Q still makes, let's say her name is Susie Q. Susie Q still makes full 50%. You just get a commission off of Susie Q's order from the company, and it's Mary Kay saying, thank you for sharing the business opportunity with Susie Q. Okay, we call them love checks because they come... They used to come, now you get them direct deposited in pink checks, and it is just showing the love and really sharing. Do you know that the one thing Mary Kay Ash asked us to do was to pass it on? You know, women, when Mary Kay was around, um, women would just be so grateful, and they would always come up to Mary Kay and be like, Mary Kay, thank you so much for this opportunity and for starting this company. It's changed my life, and blah, 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 and she would always say, what, how she would always answer that is then pass it on. Pass it on. So we're going to talk about team building in a minute and how to do that, but this is the one thing that Mary Kay asked us to do, okay? And I will tell you that I had a really weird feeling about recruiting. So if that's you, don't worry about it. We'll definitely talk about that too. Okay, senior consultant is one to two active, all right? You make 4% commission. Then you're a star team builder, and that is when you have three or four active team members. You still make 4% commission. Now you get a $50 team building bonus for every qualified team member you have. And qualified means their initial order is 600 or more. Okay? So $50 team building bonus, your fourth qualified and on. Then team leader, you want to put a big star by that because that's where you get a raise. Five to seven personal team members. And at this point, you make nine or 13% commission. I'll run through it really quickly, but you don't have to understand all. We can talk about it later. You always make 9% when you have five active. Always, always, always. But you make 13% commission when five of them order in one month. So five of them order 225 or more in a month. 
and you personally are ordering 600 because they want you not just team building, they want you team building and sharing or, and selling, right? And most consultants who are um, actively working their businesses and selling are ordering at least 600 wholesale, right? So any month that you order 600 wholesale and five of your team members order 225 in a month, you make 13% commission. Now I'm gonna show you in a second that it adds up really quickly. Even me as a sales director, I make 13, nine or 13, it's always 13 because I always order 600 and I always have five of my personal people ordering at least 225 in a month, okay? So even as a sales director, I make 13% commission off my personal people. And then at this point, you still get a $50 team building bonus. And at the team leader position, you can start going on target for your car. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but you can start going on target for your car, okay? Then future sales directors, eight active, uh, but then you, most people just skip right over this and they go into director and qualification. If you want to be a sales director, you have to get into something called DIQ. Director and qualification is what it stands for. And that means you have 10 active people at the end of a given month. And then you go through a qualification period of one to four months where you and your team qualify to become a unit. The director is the director of her unit. That is, um, and we call it a unit. I know it's confusing. You have your team and your unit when you're a director. Your team is always just your personal team. And when you're a consultant, that's always just your team. It's always one level underneath. We always say we're not pyramid because you don't get paid off levels and levels and levels underneath. Um, we get paid off one level underneath, okay? And that is, as a consultant now, that's your team, okay? Me as a director, I have my own personal team. And those are the people that I personally recruited. Now, if I am not your personal recruiter, then you're not part of my team. You may be part of my unit, and that means you sign up under one of my people's people, but you're not um, part of my team. Does that make sense? So it's two different things. So unit is anybody that your, your people recruit. So when you're in DIQ, um, you go in with 10 and you basically end with 24, and there's a sales requirement and stuff, but anybody that your 10 people recruit counts towards that 24, So because it's creating a unit. Anyways. If you have a desire to become a sales director, we can talk, because I truly believe it's the best position out there. Um, I may be a little biased, but it is the best um, job out there because, yes, you, you can make a lot of money, the income potential see is a lot higher, but my favorite part is really helping people like you, helping new consultants come in and watching them grow and build their confidence and really helping people pursue their dreams and be a part of that and encourage them and support them and, you know, cheer them along along the way. So it's really cool. Anyways, you can look at the top of the, the sales director thing and see there's tons of different bonuses. You're not going to know what all of that is, but just know that the average director makes it between 50 and a hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, but I can go above that. My income statement last year was like 189,000 or something like that. So it can go up from there. But if you want to be making over $50,000 a year, you could do that with sales. It'll just take a lot longer. Okay. Um, that you have to, hustle a lot of product where to become a sales director if you want that steady income and you're looking to replace you know um, a job directorship is where you want to be and honestly most directors most of the directors that I know of are usually working around 20 hours a week with their Mary Kay okay and becoming a sales director does not have to take a lot of time we're gonna talk about that in a second but it does not have to take a lot of time one of my best friends she made a hundred thousand dollars a year um, at her job and she was working over 60, 60 hours a week and she became a director while working 60 hours a week at her other job um, and she earned her pink Cadillac while still working 60 hours a week at her other job. So it doesn't take much time, it really is about focus activity. We're gonna talk about that in a minute too. Um, so sales director, awesome, awesome position. There, there's all the perks, okay? All right, the other thing I'm gonna go over really quickly is I know I just showed, ratted all that, but then I want you to pull up this sheet and there were three sheets in there, but I think it was called the same work comparison, okay? And basically what this does is it shows you, okay, based off the exact same activity, how much more you can get paid at each position, okay? So I think this, this is pretty eye-opening. Okay, so we're gonna kinda of go through this scenario, make sure you understand it because this is a big deal. So this is giving you an example of one of a party. In one month, you have six parties with three people. So it's the hostess plus two, which is very, 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 very minimal, minimal for a party. Um, and, and $200 in average sales, which is very, very, very low for a party as well, but they're keeping the averages low, right? So 
If you do that six parties in a month as a consultant, you're going to be selling 1200. This is not including any reorders or anything like that. Selling 1200. So just to keep the math simple, your retail profit is going to be $600 from your sales. So we start consulting if you do that three months in a row. Okay. Then it says hold a five sharing day with your director to learn how to team build. Here's the deal. I don't expect any of you to know or be comfortable team building yet. You become comfortable by doing it, by doing practice career talks, by sharing the business and asking for people's opinion with me. We can do three-way calls if you're not local to me. We can sit down and meet people for coffee where I talk and you listen. You use me. You use your director. It's not your job to feel comfortable with that yet, okay? So hold five sharing appointments, and when you have – basically the bottom line is one in four or five people are going to sign up. You can get them in front of me. And sit down, meet for coffee. My recruiting ratio is 10 times hard, or higher. So if you share with five people, then you have a one team member. Let's say that one team member orders 1800 Now you're going to, that same month, you're going to make 600 from your sales, but now you're going to get a 4% team building commission, so you're going to make $72. So your income is $672. So then it says down there you start scheduling sharing appointments. And if you shared with all of those people that you did the parties with, so there were six parties with three people, that's 18 people. If you shared and did practice sharing appointments with you and your director, then the averages are that one of five will sign, so you'll have three new team members, okay? And let's say new team members place $1,800 wholesale orders, so they get all their bonuses and their star, um, which most smart um, women do that can um, come in with a decent store. So let's say all three of them come in with an 1800. So then you're a star team builder, three active team members at that point, okay? So you're making 4%. Now your commission just jumped up because you have three people ordering 1800. Now it went to 216 is your commission check. Plus your 600 in sales, so you're making 816, right? So it's only going up. Then as a team leader, this is where it gets good. As a team leader, if you're making 9% off those same people, that's not assuming um, any of you know any of the rest of your team order or anything else. Now you're gonna make 1,236 if you're making 9%. That means that just five, you have five active, um, that means you didn't order your 600, which if you're selling 1,200, you should be. Um, but Let's say they all didn't order that month. And then, but if you make 13% commission, 13% commission off that exact same scenario, now you're gonna make 14.52. Okay, so you could be a consultant and just making 600, or if you share the business with people and you have, um, you go on target for your car, now you're gonna be making 14.52. Um, I don't know if anyone else can get excited about making an extra $1,400 a month, but I hope you could. Now, if you go back and look at the time that would take, um, six parties, let's say the average party is two hours max, three hours max, 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 like counting maybe drive time. You know, six times three is 18. That's 18 hours in the month, the month, and you're making $1,400. Could that excite anyone? I would hope so. Now. Here's where it gets really good. So of course, then if you keep doing that, then you can go on track for your car and actually earn your car. And um, what we'll talk about that, well, I'll, I'll just explain it really quickly. Right now, the qualifications are, and they are gonna change in a couple months. So if you're listening to this past, what is this, September of 2016, um, they may have changed. But right now, and this is all the more reason to go on target for your car, right now for the next two months the qualifications are that you can go on target for your car when you have five active team members and your orders and your team's orders are five thousand wholesale in the month and when you do that four months in a row you can earn a free car and you have to grow from that five five active to 14 active um and you have to do 20,000 wholesale so if you did it four months in a row five thousand four months in a row be twenty thousand if you just did it in one month, like, you know, I share in my career chats that, you know, the quickest someone has earned a car is in 19 days. So she got to 14 um, active people and 20,000 wholesale in 19 days because she made up her mind that she was going to do it. And really, <laughs> it's all about a decision. There's so much power in a decision that in a decided heart, nothing can stop you. When you truly throw your heart over the line and say, I'm going to go and drive for my car. I'm going to get my red jacket. Nothing's going to stop me. I'm going to finish my start. Nothing's going to stop me. When you get to that level of commitment, 
nothing stops you. Yeah, you get the no's. Yeah, you get the people saying, no, I don't want to be a part of that, or you're crazy, or whatever. But you also get the yeses, because you're more determined to ask more people, right? And you're more resilient, because you're committed, and your heart is thrown over the line. So um, anyways, got off on a tangent, but that, that's how you earn your car. Okay. So you can have an extra $375 a month coming in if you, um, wanted to, um, if you didn't want the car. So, all right. Then the last page says independent sales director. Now this is assuming that those same six parties, this is not assuming anything else. Like this is not as a director, the rest of your unit and the rest of your team. This is not assuming anything else. This is just those people. Because as a director, in this example, they would probably have a unit of other people ordering, but we're not counting that at all, okay? This is just off that same activity, right? Um, as a director, you don't have to understand all those bonuses, but basically just know that you would be making $3,283 as a director for the exact same amount of activity. As a director, your income triples for the exact same amount of activity that it's worth it to just get there and then you do the same thing you know I remember when I was a consultant I'm like man I could never be a director because I don't know how to lead I don't know what to say I mean I could have never imagined speaking in front of a whole room of people and I didn't think that I had anything great to offer and now look at me now I love teaching and training it's my favorite part but at first I didn't think I would be any good at it and so it's something you grow into so just know that you don't have to worry about that right now. Right now, we're just strictly talking about the numbers that just know that it's totally possible. And I had a lot of doubts. I had a lot of insecurities. I mean, everybody does about moving up because with every promotion at, at any place, any new job, there's always some fears and some insecurities. If you become a manager, if you become, I don't know, the team lead or whatever, there's always some fear and doubt. So just know that that's normal. Okay. It's normal to be afraid, but You've got to, I, I would encourage you just, just get into action, get there and see if you like it, right? You got nothing to lose and everything to gain. So why not just get there and see if you like it? Um, you don't have to be a director forever. You could get there and try it and see, right? Um, but I love it. I think it's definitely, definitely the best thing out there. So it's pretty stinking cool. Um, all right. And then the other, she, um, oh, the other things that I did email out, I emailed um, two other things. One was if you are looking to replace an income, great sheet of you write down your income, how much your expenses are, blah, blah, blah. And it will, and you know, your party um, average and your face average, it will break down for you exactly the amount of activity that it would take. Um, the other thing really quickly that I will go over is this sheet right here. I love this sheet. It's called the goal setting sheet. And, um, I'll run through just a quick example. You can do this based off your own numbers, but this adds up pretty quickly. Okay. So it says, I'm willing to hold blank amount of parties per week. Okay, because all that other stuff that we talked about, that's great and all, but of course it takes some activity to get there, right? And so each of you are different places. You know, some of you may be willing to hold one party a week. Maybe you're willing to hold 10 parties a week. I don't know what your number is, but write down there in the number one, what I'm, I'm willing to hold blank parties per week, okay? What are you willing to do? That's the key. Because all that sounds great, but you've got to be willing to do the activity, right? Um, so I'm willing to do blank parties per week. And I just put in here a very rough number. I'm going to throw out some numbers just to kind of show you how this works. Um, three parties per week. Mary Kay always said there's something in Mary Kay called three plus three plus three. You can go anywhere you want to go in Mary Kay by doing three parties a week, $300 in sales, and sharing the business with three people in a week, okay? And by the way, this is definitely the month to be talking about parties. In case you haven't heard, we are in a competition with me and one of my friends in her future area to see whose future area can have the most parties in the month, okay? And so this is the month of parties, you guys. This is Mary Kay's anniversary. Next week is Mary Kay's anniversary. Why not honor Mary Kay with holding parties? Why not honor Mary Kay, Ash, and, um, and what she created for us and for so many millions of women by honoring her with doing parties? because Mary Kay would have like rolled over in a grave if she knew that we were not doing three parties a week you guys because that's what she wanted for us she wanted you making money and when you're not doing that level of activity you're, you're not making a lot of money that she wanted us making money but it takes us doing parties and being willing to do the activity you guys so I'd say this month let's honor her honor her by doing parties okay so this month I have a hostess promo for us to win because I'm very competitive I want us to win right 
that any hostess this month that will host a party for you has to be a qualified party, which, which um, is her plus three. And those three people have to be over 18 and not have a Mary Kay consultant. And then it has to be at least $100 in sales, which is so low, so low, which if let's say worst case scenario, there weren't $100 at the per sales at the party, then have her collect outside orders. Have her do stuff to be able to qualify for the, for the coach first. And then she has, the hostess has to just listen to some business information. She can watch my marketing videos. She can do whatever. Um, I just want to be able to follow up with her, okay? Um, which, total side note, because why not? We're getting off on a tangent. Um, oh, I don't have the paper down there. But I did email out the Millennium Woman form, which after every single face that you do this month and from now on, I want you having every single person to fill out that Millennium Woman form and you send them to me. I want you to take a picture of it and send it to me ASAP, right after those faces. Every single face you do. What that Millennium Woman form does for me, it helps me help you. If um, you didn't book that second appointment, if you didn't book the career chat, it's my job to book that for you, okay? So those papers are gonna help you immensely, all right? So every face you see, have them fill out the Millennium Woman form so I can help you, all right? Okay, side note, going back to this paper. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put in three, and we're gonna do the example with three parties a week. So let's say you're willing to hold three. If it's more or less, put your number there. So three. Um, and number one, number two, what is the, what, which is the, which is the total blank hours of work per week? What does your average party take you? For most people, it's two hours. Um, I'm going to put in three hours per party, including drive time, because that's worst case scenario, like maximum. So I'm putting nine um, in number two, okay? Nine hours per week, tops. I need to book blank parties for weeks. So you take your hold goal, how many parties you want to hold, which for us it was three times two, so that's six. So say I need to book six parties per week. Because in case you haven't figured out, not every facial you book is going to hold, or every party, you, every, anything your book is going to hold. Today I had two appointments, um, telling appointments, and one of them held, one of them didn't. <laughs> the girl that didn't, she got, she got, Send to the ER. So life happens, you guys. It's called life. It's not us. It's called life, okay? But you've got to plan for it. Then you don't get depressed. You know, one of my keys to success has always been I want to, I want to work the numbers. I want to overcompensate so I'm not frustrated. You know, if you know that you need to have three parties a week, you've got to book six or eight, right? Then you're not frustrated. If you only have three appointments booked, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up to be disappointed that um, I've always been like, I just want more, no more, 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 more numbers. Same thing with my team. Same thing with my unit is I always want growth, 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 because guess what? Then you don't think, take things as personally. When you have a ton of appointments on your books, you don't get as discouraged when things don't come together. You don't get as a discouraged when things cancel because you're like, whoo, have a break, you know? Um, but when you just have like one appointment a week set up, you're discouraged, right? And then you start questioning yourself and say, what's wrong with me? I must not be any good at this. I must not know how to book. I must be doing something wrong. And we get very critical. Or guess what? When you have lots of numbers going on, you don't have time to be critical, okay? So that was a little side note, little words of wisdom. Those are huge words of wisdom that I hope you take to heart. Work the numbers. Always work more numbers than you think you're going to need. And I promise you won't get as discouraged in this business. Um, and you won't be as critical of yourself. Um, okay, so you need to book at least six. I will see blank faces per week. So that's your hold goal times four. It's assuming four people are at the party, which with our hostess promo this month, that would be true. So that's 12 faces that you're going to see per week. I will sell blank per week. Faces times $65. So you take 12 faces times $65. In this example, it's $780. The average face is $50 to $65 each. If that is not your average, let's have a conversation. I can guarantee it's one of three things. A, and probably the most popular one, is you are not closing. You're not closing. Go back to new consultant training videos. Do the stuff by talking there. You know, do the, the table close where you show them the roll of bag options. I just sold the roll of bag today. Princess bag, you know, because you go through the steps. You have her create her wish list. You have her dream and pick which that she would get. You know, if you offer payment plans, you show her payment plans. You only can do payment plans if you have inventory. Not having enough inventory will, will decrease your sales and not have your sales be there. 
the own, I mean, you want to be getting to at least 1800 on your shelf and eventually get to 3600 because that's profit level where you're truly making good money is at, at 3600 But you want to get to 1800 as quickly as possible if you're not already there, okay? Um, because you will be making much more and your averages will be higher, okay? But not closing boils down to confidence. It boils down to our confidence is we don't ask them those questions because maybe we're doubting ourselves, okay? And also, I believe not having inventory decreases your confidence because then you're like, well, she wants to buy something that I may not have it. And so um, that, that like the, the, those, those two things, not closing, not having enough inventory, and then maybe not working with the right clientele. Maybe not working with the right clientele because honestly, if someone's broke as a joke, there's only so much you can do, right? So maybe you need to work in a different clientele base, okay? So anyways, total side note, 12 faces times 65 is 780. So then your profit in that little green square is, you know, we do the 60-40 split, um, which actually you're not even supposed to do the 60-40 split until you get up to a full store, but we're just going to keep it simple. So that means you're... You'll be making 310, 310 from sales per week, okay? 310. My wholesale order, it's going to be half of the 780, is 390. So your wholesale order weekly is 390. You guys, every single one of you should be and could be, and I want you to be ordering 600 wholesale a month. Those bracelets, you guys, are too cute to give up. And I want you ordering them not just to order, but I want you making money. And I want you at least making $600 a week, you guys. It is, or $600 a month. It is not hard to A, stay active and B, um, order 600 a month when you're working consistently and selling this product, you guys, it sells. You gotta get the product on people's faces. Okay, so 390 um, is your wholesale order per week. Wholesale order per week. So times four, what is that? Over almost a $1,200 order wholesale in a month. So um, number eight, I will offer the career to blank people per week. So whatever your whole goal is, so three times two. So they're assuming that, okay, there's four people at the party. You ask at least half of them. You ask two people to just listen. So you ask six people a week, half of the people that you're in front of at least to listen to the business opportunity. So you offer it to them. Um, Six people a week with my director's help because once again, we do not expect you to know how to recruit on your own. With my director's help, I will add blank new team members per week. So it's six divided by one, six divided by five. This example, it's 1.2 new team members a week. Obviously, you can't have a 0.2 team member, but you got it. That over the month, it's going to be five. My team will produce blank and new production. So new team member times a thousand because that's the average new consultant over order is a thousand. So 1,200 is the next blank. And then below that is the little next square, the green square, is my 13% commission is going to be 156 each week. 156 each week. So you add both of those green squares together, my total weekly earnings from sales and um, commission is 466 a week. A week. So we multiply that times four, you know, for four weeks in a month, and what is that? Like, I don't know, that's thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400. Uh, I think it's $1,400. And that's working nine hours per week, max. You guys, it's about consistency. And then below that, the last one is I could be on target for my car in, um, so it's five divided by new team members, five divided by 1.2 is in four weeks. You could be on target for your car in four weeks. Every single one of you could be on target for your car this month if you're willing to do the work and if you're willing to get into action and willing to not make excuses as to why you can't because here's what I hear all day long yeah but yeah that sounds great Kenneth but 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 and guess what as long as you're making excuses it's never gonna happen an excuse is a lie that no one believes but you let that sink in for a minute an excuse is a lie that no one believes but you Okay, someone could be in the exact same situation you are, have the exact same set of circumstances and figure it out. That really it's about figuring it out. How badly do you want it? Okay, because I just went over a ton of information. Now I'm going to talk a little about the heart because here's the deal. All of that is possible. All of that is possible. But A, you've got to believe that it's possible for you. 
And you've got to want it badly enough to be willing, willing to push through the obstacles, to be willing to push through the discouragement, to be willing to call me and talk to your director when you're discouraged and you're doubting yourself and you don't think you can do it. But guess what? You can move and you can move quickly once you are clear on why it is that you want this. So I want you to ask yourself, why do you want this? If you have a desire to become a director or have a desire to go on target for your car, why do you want that? And why is that important to you? What will that do for your family? How will it make you feel? How will it make your husband feel? How will it make your kids feel? That is the stuff that will motivate you. You've got to keep that in front of you because when you get those disappointments, when you get those discouragements, when you get those obstacles thrown your way, you have got to keep that passion and that reason in front of you. You guys, I've seen people get into DIQ in 48 hours. That's the quickest I've seen is, I, um, and I know her, she's a friend of mine. She got into DIQ. She was a nurse and worked full-time 60 hours a week at a hospital. And she was shown the marketing plan. She was shown how you can become a sales director. And she said, I want that 10 active. All right, I can do that. In 48 hours of signing up, she got her 10 active. Now that is called a decision. And that is called knowing why your passion or knowing your why and knowing your passion, knowing why you want this and what it will do for your family. Because she, she said she asked a hundred people and she got 10. Okay. Within, within 48 hours. So your passion has to be high and be willing to ask that many people. Are you willing to ask that many people? Or do you give into the excuse that I don't know that many people? Guess what you do is that your, your passion isn't there if you're, if you're telling yourself that. So I'd encourage you to question that. So what is your why? What is your why? What is motivating you to do that? And what's really holding you back from going all in and really going for it? Because if it's available, why not jump all in? It's available for you. It's available for me. Why not? Okay? And I can tell you, here's the main objections I hear. Okay? So, you're not alone. Um, the biggest one is fear, which we'll talk about that in a minute. But the other one that I hear all the time is time. Time. I don't have enough time. I'm too busy. I don't have enough time. I just gave you several examples of A, that lady that got into DIQ in 48 hours was working full-time as a nurse. She finished DIQ full-time as a nurse. My best friend, Julie, she um, finished DIQ and earned her Cadillac while working 60 hours a week at a job. Don't tell me you don't have time. Every single one of you have time. Um, the key is that your passion isn't strong enough that you're not making time for it because we make time for the things that are important to us and we find time and we move things around when things are important important to us. Okay. So I'd encourage you that goes back to your why, why do you want this and why are you holding yourself back and why are you making excuses? And, um, it, you know, everybody, everybody struggles with time management. I don't care who you are. You know, 98% of people struggle with time management. So that, that is something that you definitely want to work on, but we all have the same 24 hours in a day and a lot of people are much more productive than other people. Okay. So you can do it, but the key is you. The key is you. And if you don't master your time, your time will master you, okay? And we only have a set amount of time that why not maximize the time that you have? You know, you can go back and use the weekly plan sheet. I emailed that out to you guys. Very, very simple, simple, simple elementary concept. I'll go over it again, but this is key. That if you really want to maximize your time, you have got to grab a hold of this weekly plan sheet and really um, taking the time to, to plan your week um, taking the time to plan your week and then you got to work your plan. Okay. So this is a very simple thing. Um, like this, with this example, you can, you can probably can't see it on there, but I just, I scratched out and pin eight to five and scratched it all off because you can't work then if you work a normal eight to five job, let's say you work, um, or let's say you have church Sunday morning, you cross that off. You have church Wednesday night, you cross that off. You have, I don't know, date night, Friday night, you cross that off. You, you cross everything out on your life. Let's say, you know, whatever you have with your kids, say you have soccer games and Taekwondo and whatever, get it all down on paper. Get your life down on paper because then you can visually see, oh, I can fit some Mary Kay on a Saturday morning. Oh, I can fit some Mary Kay on a Tuesday evening. Oh, I can fit some Mary Kay on a Thursday evening. And that's three time slots. You could book your three parties that we talked about. If you really want to go quick, do four to five parties a week, you know, but you have got to write it down on paper and then stick to that plan. You get to determine when you want to work, but you have got to set your hours, and then when those hours arrive, 
you've got to work those hours. You guys, most of you that work a job, you work your tail off for someone else. They determine when you work. They determine when you take off. They determine when you get up in the morning. They determine when you go to the bathroom. They determine everything that you get to pick when you want to work. So why not pick it and then work it and respect yourself enough to work it during those times. And when you when you treat this like a business and you work it when you say you're going to work it, your family will respect that too, okay? So they'll know not to call you to drop them off at the mall or whatever when you're when it's Tuesday night and you have your Mary Kay meeting or you're working your business, okay? So that's really, really important is that you map up the times you're going to work, you get your family on board, you get your husband on board, boyfriend, kids, whatever, and they know, once again, they know your why and your passion because for most people, their why is their kids. They want or or their husband or they they want to get their husband out of a job he hates. They want to get their kids, you know, they want to pay um, for a trip, some vacation with their kids. They want to pay for soccer for their kids. I don't know what it is. But if you tell your kids, hey, mom's going to work so I can pay for going to Disneyland for you, they're gonna be much more involved and be um, on board with you going and working, I promise. But you've gotta get them on board and they've gotta know that they're part of the reason you're doing this. So um, you gotta write that time down and then stick to it, okay? And stick it to it consistently because you can go anywhere you wanna go in this business. If you do three parties a week and that means you're working like eight to 10 hours a week consistently, you can be at that place, okay? Because the kid's key is consistency just like everything else in life, right? It's consistency. Um, let's see. Another thing that I hear people say is I don't know people. That's a big objection. Well, I would, um, caution you to question that, um, because I can guarantee, you know, people, but I can guarantee what you're probably doing. If you're giving me that excuse, it's you are prejudging for them and you are already making a decision for them as to why they wouldn't want to book with you as to why they wouldn't want to do a facial as to why they wouldn't want to do Mary Kay. Every single person, I don't care how long you've lived in a place usually has at least a hundred people if you've lived there for a year in their circle. Now those are people that you maybe see at the grocery store, people you see at your favorite Starbucks, people you see at in your church, your neighbors, your husband's coworkers, your kids' um, parents of the friends, you know, the, the teachers, just people in your circle. If you've lived anywhere for five, 10 years, you usually have at least three to 500 people in your circle that I would really challenge you to go back and make that list of everyone you really know with skin. Cause I can guarantee you probably didn't make that list of everybody you really know with skin that we ask you to ask as a new consultant that usually we're, we're not asking and we're doubting ourselves and we're prejudging for them. So I don't believe the excuse of not knowing people and there are a gazillion ways to meet people. I built my entire business three times of not knowing people, you know, um, and there's plenty of ways to meet people. And so it, you can only tell me you don't know people if you just moved to an area less than a month ago. Okay. If you live somewhere more than a month, then you know people, you're just not asking. Okay. If you don't know people go back to new consultant training, watch my first video. I go over a gazillion ways to meet people. Okay. So eventually you are going to run out of people that you know, but once again, you've got to continually be bringing new leads. The lady that I just sold the roll back to today, I met her at a restaurant promo that I did a couple nights ago. Like you guys, I'm constantly getting new names myself. If I need to get new names, you need to be getting new names. Okay. So have you really tapped into the people that you know? And secondly is, what are you doing to get new names? Because if you want steady income too, once you get out of your friends and family, because if you really work this business smart, you should be booking parties from parties, right? And then have other additional sources of leads coming in. But you want to be having, once again, I go back to my solution as always, give me lots and lots and lots of numbers and some of them are going to pan out. I'd say you want to have at least 30 to 50 new names a week coming in. Okay. So there you go. Don't tell me you don't know people because y'all do know people. Okay. Really it boils down to the biggest objection most people have for moving up and it's fear. It's fear. They're afraid to step out of their comfort zone. You're um, used to being in your little comfort zone and you don't want to change. You don't want to change and go for something big. And guess what? It's normal to be afraid. But how long are you going to let your dreams not happen and be on hold? And how long are you going to say, well, next year? or after the kids go back to school, or after I get done with this, or after this happens, or maybe when my husband comes back, because what happens is we're procrastinating, and procrastination is rooted in fear, that we're afraid, and we keep thinking, well, maybe when that one thing happens, then I'll be less afraid. 
guess what? You're not going to be less afraid. You're going to be just as afraid. Actually, you're probably going to have a lot more compound interest on that fear because the longer you put things off, the scarier they become. Just it is what it is. And so um, it's normal to be afraid, but you know, you have a choice. What most people do when they're um, focusing on fear, they're focusing on all the things that could go wrong and all the reasons why it couldn't happen. And oh my gosh, what if I went for this and then it didn't happen? And all the, oh, what will people think? And oh, what if they say no? And all the reasons um, why it couldn't happen. You know, if you're going to be thinking about something, why not think about all the good that could come from it? Why not think about how it could bless your family to have an extra $3,000 a month working 20 hours a week tops? How would that bless your family? Why not think about the good instead of focusing on all the reasons why you can't, right? Because that will shut you down. Um, so it's normal to be afraid. But honestly, the only thing that holds you back is you. That Just like I always say in this business, the only thing that holds you back is right here in between your ears. And you've got to work harder on these, this like six inches in between your ears than you do on anything else. And just a little plug for... If you have not plugged into Jamie and all the three other nationals, there's four nationals that do shine calls each week. And you guys, they are powerful training calls by four national sales directors. It's 20 bucks for a quarter. And it literally has revolutionized my thinking. You guys, I've spent a ton of money on coaching and self-help stuff and feeling like, oh, well, maybe if, if I had this person, I spent thousands, thousands of dollars. Um, working with other coaches and people that I thought could help me and they didn't where Jamie is $20 and it, it's one of the best investments that you can make you guys. So that'll help you really work on growing you. What are you reading? Who are you spending the most time with? You can become like the five people you spend the most time with. You become like a, you become the books you're reading. So what are you reading? What are you doing to fill you up? Because as you're filling you up, that fear will subside. And as you get into action, that fear will subside. Um, I'm going to end with at the very end, you know, um, a quote that just talks about take that first step. Don't be thinking about, you know, most, most people, they think, oh, well, I can never be director. I can never do this. And they're thinking way down the line instead of just taking that first step, taking that first step. And each step you go will hold your hand and you'll be there with you. That's the beauty of this business is you're not alone. Okay. So it's normal to be afraid, but go for it, you guys. Um, so the question is, there's the buffet. What do you want? What part of it do you want? And um, because it's available to you, the choice is yours. You can either just eat salad or you can have the entire buffet. You can have steak and salad and breadsticks and dessert and everything that you want. It's available to you too. But like we said, the only thing that will hold you back is you. It's the only thing that will hold you back. And it's available for you too. And guess what? Like I talked about, it doesn't have to take long. Once you make that decision that you are going to go for any of these things that I talk about, it can happen quickly like that. You know, and of course, I didn't go into recruiting and all the, the steps and how to do that. I mean, the bottom line is recruiting is about passion. That when your passion is high and you truly believe that you have the best thing out there for women, you will recruit and you will attract people. And you guys, most people out there, they're miserable. They're depressed. They're working a job that they don't love, that they can't imagine doing for another 40 years. Do you know that 97% of people, they work for a paycheck. They don't work because they love it. They don't work because it brings them joy. They don't work because they're making a difference in the world and they're helping other people. They work because they want to pay their bills. You guys, this is something that we can offer hope for people and we can offer them a solution that can be different, you know? And so what I want you to do, I want you to be thinking about two, well, one of the biggest things with recruiting is you have to get yourself out of the way. You have to be thinking about her and how this can totally be blessing her. You know, um, my first team member, I think I, I mentioned at the beginning that I thought recruiting was weird and I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to recruit. I, I don't know about that. I don't know how to do that. And I, you know, I was focusing on all the normal excuses. Me, 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 me. I don't think I could do that. Um, that'll be weird. I don't want to be, make it uncomfortable or awkward, whatever. I was focusing on me. And I remember as a few months in, and my um, first team member, uh, she was the hostess at a party I did and I sold $500 to all her friends. She had like three or four other people there and sold $500. And she came up to me at the end and she said, how much did you sell? I said, $500. She said, okay, how much of that did you just make? I said, $250. And she said, how much does it cost to get started? I said, $100. And she said, sign me up. And I said, what? I don't even know what that means. I had to call my director and be like, I don't know what this means. This lady says she wants to sign up. What does that even mean? Um, and so she signed up and you guys, I saw how it changed her life. She was a nurse and had a very, very autistic son. She had to quit her full-time job to 
stay home and provide for him and take care of him. And she was able to match her nursing income in her first two months while still being able to stay home with him. And she was so grateful to me and just kept saying, thank you, Candice. Thank you so much. This changed my life. And I'm like, I did nothing. <laughs> you recruited yourself. <laughs> but it changed the way that I thought about it because it, it was helping her change her life. That when you're truly thinking about how can I help this person change their life, then you're sharing for the right reasons. You guys, recruiting isn't about you. It's about the other person. And the reason people don't recruit is because they're making it about them. And, oh, I don't want to look stupid. And, oh, I don't want to be awkward. And, oh, I don't want her to be thinking that I'm, you know, pushing this thing on her that she may not even want. No, we're just sharing. And that's why you use me as a practice interview. Say, we're just sharing. I'm going to share the information. Take it or leave it. And if you, want to, if you want to take advantage of it, great. If not, great. Okay? So, I'll just say... What do you want to commit to? What do you want of the buffet? I want you to commit to something. And I want to hear from you in the next 24 hours that you um, are going to commit to something. I don't care what it is, but I want you to commit to something that if you want to move up and truly be ha maximize the earning potential, the marketing plan, you want to be sharing the business. You want to be sharing the business. And I've always been told you guys it's selfish to not share the business because we don't know what people are going through. We don't know what their situation is, that it's not our decision. It's not up to us to make that decision for them. It's their choice. It's our job to offer it. That's why we call it sharing and not recruiting is because we're just sharing the information with them. If they want to do it, great. If not, great. It's not about you. It's about them. And you want to be thinking about how you can truly bless them. Okay. So, um, I'm going to give you a challenge. I'm almost done. And here's the deal is that if you want to move up in your business, I want to work with you. I totally want to work with you. I'll work with anybody, but I really want to work with people who, who want to move up quickly. And I'm going to play ball with you. And how ball how playing ball works is I give you a challenge. And if you want to play ball and you're serious about this, you take the challenge and you do it. <laughs> and you contact me back and you tell me you've done it. Okay? Um, and that's how ball works is you throw balls and then you throw back to me and then I throw you back and then I give you another challenge. I give you another challenge. You don't have to think way far down the line. You just think about, okay, I'm going to do this challenge. This is the first challenge, okay? So your first challenge is I want you to make a list of 20 women, 20 women in your life. And don't even tell me you don't know 20 women. You know 20 women who could benefit from the Mary Kay opportunity. And here's the only rule. You cannot prejudge. I want you to be thinking about who could benefit from it. Who could use so more money? Who's that person that's always complaining about being so broke? Um, maybe they need a backup plan. Maybe they're in a really bad situation and they need a backup plan. Maybe they need um, some positivity in their life. Maybe they're, you know, going through a tough time or they're negative Nelly or whatever. They just need some positivity in their life. Maybe they need some more girlfriends. Maybe they need hope. Just hope that life can be different. Maybe they need um, some increase in confidence. Every woman needs that, by the way. Um, maybe they just need some more fun. I don't know, maybe they need a backup plan. Maybe their job is unstable and they just need a backup plan. So women who could benefit from Mary Kay, okay, somehow. You're not prejudging, but women who could use some of those things that they could use more money, more friends, more positivity, more girlfriends, more time with their kids, more, po more um, confidence, backup plan, whatever. Um, and then what I want you to do is I want you to ask them to just listen to the marketing opportunity. Right now, we um, have a goal to share the business with 100 people, 100 people by the 15th, and we're a little bit behind. And so you ask them to just listen. When we reach 100, I'll be giving away $100 cash, $100 cash um, to someone that listens. And so you say, do you have you know 20 minutes you could just listen? Um, they get five extra entries into that drawing if they will actually sit down and meet me for coffee. Um, which, by the way, I leave to Rome on um, Monday. So probably the best thing is to have them come to one of the events that I'm doing this weekend if you want them live. Or it could be over Skype if you're not local to me. and um, Or they can watch my video or a video and then just follow up with me. Okay, that's how they get entered. And when you have five people listen by the 15th, you are going to get a Starbucks gift card. 
So that gives a reason for you to listen, but you've got to ask at least 20 people to have five to 10 listen. It just, it is what it is. You tell them I have a goal. You blame it on me. Say my director challenged me to have people just listen to the marketing plan. And here's what I always say is this may not be for you and that's totally fine. I just need people to just listen. My director's so mean. She's making me just listen. Those of you that are new, use the pearls of sharing program and say, hey, I need to have 10 people just listen and I'll get these cute prizes. All you gotta do is just listen. It's pretty painless, right? that what most people do is they don't ask because they're like, oh, well, she would never want to do it. And you feel like you're recruiting. No, you're just saying, hey, watch this video. They can take it or leave it, but you may be surprised who would actually be interested, right? So your challenge is make a list of 20 women, and I want you to ask them to listen, and I want you to have five people listen by the 15th. I want you to make up your mind that you're going to find five people that are going to listen by the 15th um, because it, we need people to have people just listen. And if all of you had at least five to 10 people listen by the 15th, someone, someone's got to be interested, right? So that's the first thing. That's you playing ball with me. And the other thing, if you really want to do this thing, is I want to hear from you. I want you to be accountable to me. I, my people that are working, we're talking daily or every other day um, that I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. And meetings are a must. Meetings are a must. You've got to plug into that positivity. I would highly recommend you know signing up for the Shine program. Let me know once you have. If you need the website, I can tell you. But one more thing that's really, really, really big deal is on the 17th, um, Jamie is doing a team building training. And if you really want more specifics and four hours of awesome training from an incredible national sales director, sign up for it. It's 25 bucks and you shall go through all the specifics of team building. I didn't go through all the specifics. I just really, the bottom line is passion. The bottom line is passion, but she'll give you much more specific. So I'd sign up for that because it's going to be some powerful training. So you are a priority for me and I want to be in front of your people and help you move. But I don't know if you want to move unless you tell me. So I want to hear from you on the next 24 hours. Okay. So I'm going to end with um, some inspiration. And this is from a book called everything big starts with something little from an enemy called average. That's the name of the book is an enemy called average. It's a good book. All successful people are faithful in the small things. There is power in taking small steps. Just like I was saying, power in, I give you the first small step, right? It's your challenge. Many people are not moving forward today simply because they are not willing to take the small step placed before them. If you have a dream to go in a particular area, you should leap at that opportunity, no matter how small to move in the direction of your dream. For example, if you dream of being a college basketball coach and you're sitting at home waiting for an invitation from Roy Williams at North Carolina University, you should know that that call is never going to come. In our business, if you want to be a sales director and you're not doing, you're doing absolutely nothing about it, that's never going to happen, okay? That you have to take that first step. You need to find an opportunity to coach somewhere, anywhere. Find a young person, a young team. Jump in and coach with all your heart like you would do if you are coaching at the highest level. Find one team member and love all over her. And you guys, if you're not sure how you feel about team members, just get one. I think it's the best thing. It's my favorite part, being a part of someone's journey and seeing their excitement and watching them change their life. Don't be afraid to take small steps. There's something powerful about momentum, no matter how small. Many times the impossible is simply the untried. Ooh. Many times the impossible is simply the untried. I haven't tried it. That's why it seems impossible. I can remember a time in my life when I was immobilized with fear, consumed with what I was supposed to do. It seemed so huge a task. I was unable to bring myself to face it. A friend came to me and spoke two words that broke that paralysis into my life. He said, do something. I'll never forget that day. Taking some small, seemingly insignificant steps, momentum began to come into my life do something. I love that. Do something. Take action. If you're at a point of paralysis in your life because, because of what, you're feel, what you feel you're supposed to do, the words today are do something. If you feel like you were supposed to be a leader and you were supposed to be doing more in this business and in your life, then do something. Take action. Don't worry about the long-term goal right now. Just take the steps that take you past the starting point. Soon you'll get to the point of no return. As soon as you climb higher, you'll be able to see much further. I love that. Don't worry about the long-term goal right now. So don't worry about whether you could be a good director or whether you could earn the car. Don't worry about that. Focus on the first step, okay? 
and your confidence will build. <laughs> With my first and even a red jacket, I never thought I could be a director. So the confidence, I had to grow into the confidence, okay? As you begin, don't be afraid. Eric Hoffer said, fear of becoming a has-been keeps some people from becoming anything. Oh, that's a big deal. Fear of becoming a has-been keeps some people from becoming anything. Every great idea is impossible from where you are starting today, but little goals add up and they add up rapidly. Most people don't succeed because they're too afraid to even try. Did you get that? Most people don't succeed because they're too afraid to even try to go for something. As incredible as it sounds, they decide in advance that they're going to fail. And I see women do this all the time. They don't go for red jacket. They don't go for team leader. They don't go for car because they have decided in advance that they're going to fail and they can never do it. You guys, you won't know unless you try. That's all the more reason you need to do it is to prove to yourself that you can do this and that you are worth it and you do deserve this. Many times, the final goal seems so unreachable, we don't even take, make, make an effort. But once you've made your decision and have started, it's like you're halfway there. So start, no matter what the circumstances, take that first step. It's simple, grow wherever you're planted. So just take that first step. Get yourself out of the way. Realize that it's not about you. It's about her. Okay, I lied. I'm going to share one more thing that I absolutely love. Um, and it popped up on my phone today. So give me a minute because um, I absolutely love this. And I, I haven't read this and shared this in a while. I'll end with this. Sorry. So the key is do something. But I also wanted to, to share this going along with um, recruiting because this is really important for us to get ourselves out of the way. Maybe she needs me. It's been a long day, and I was finishing a task. As I hurried past her, that little voice said, ask. Ugh, not today, I told myself. I'm tired, and it shows. Besides, I could look foolish, and she'll most likely just say no. While drifting off to sleep that night, I saw her face again. I wondered what her life was like, her dreams, her needs, her pain. What if she'd been praying for a friendly word or smile, the chance to meet somebody that would go that extra mile? What if she'd been looking for a break, an open door? Was this the opportunity that she'd been praying for? Because I can't tell you how many people have been like, I've been praying for an opportunity like this, that we got to get ourselves out of the way. So what if she'd been looking for a break and open door. Was this the opportunity that she'd been praying for? I saw the car she would not drive, the ring she would not wear, because I would not risk myself to stop, to ask, to share. So what if what I offered her was not her cup of tea? That was a choice for her to make. How selfish could I be? When all my dreams are realized, I don't want to feel regret for the lives that I didn't touch and change, the no's I didn't get. Oh, let me live the true go give and let my mission be not do I need her, but maybe she needs me. You guys, there's people out there who need you. Get over yourself, get out of your own way, and let's go bless some people. So get started. I can't wait to hear from you. Bye-bye.